I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making me. You know, nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody take the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. What was I swear? I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. I like to make a motion to uh, uh, let the chief move forward with the body cam uh, patrol eyes. Second. The motion is second to uh, move forward with the body cams. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call. Trustee Muhammad. Aye. Trustee Stubbs. Aye. Trustee Pearson. Aye. Trustee Henry. Aye. Motion carried for aye. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chief. Next thing on the agenda is squatters, Trustee Pearson. Um, I put squatters on here because of the incident that we had recently. And uh, after talking with uh, Chief Collins and uh, Trustee Henyard and uh, uh, getting a memo from uh, Attorney Murphy, it's more of a housing issue. It does not become a police issue until there's a crime committed in that uh, 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 in a squatter's case. So my recommendation was to throw it back at Trustee Henry, uh because uh, I understand she has been doing some research on it. And uh, if it goes to committee, uh, that uh, chief have a representative there that from the police department that could chime in, but. I'm going to give the lead back to housing. Okay. Thank you, Trustee Pearson. Um, I'm going to key on two things. One, we have a big problem here in the village of Dalton with squats. People literally prey on our vacant property. They drive through our community and they basically take ownership of the house. And what I mean by that is they just basically break in the house, move in, and that's their home. Um, one way of getting rid of uh, a squatter and I talked to the chief and I talked to the attorney about this is it's called criminal trespassing. You, the homeowner, like if you vacated your home and you left it and you moved to the city or whatever, or you say you came back from out of town and you went on vacation, you came back, somebody's living in your house. You would come to the village, you would go to the police department, talk to the chief. You will basically file a criminal complaint. You would therefore sign that criminal complaint and that would give the officer the means to go and remove that individual from the house. And what I mean by remove is, of course, they will be arrested. So you can't be scared to sign a complaint. Now you have possession of your home. So that's just one way of doing it. Otherwise, squatters do have rights. They do have the opportunity to stay in the vacant properties, unfortunately. And I want to throw it to Chief. Did you want to speak on that today? Is that what? Okay, uh, Chief and then also um, the attorney. So I guess I'll go to the attorney first and then the chief. So uh, attorney, would you like to explain or elaborate on squatters before I give, get into this story? <laughs> Can you get him an example of you putting out a squatter in the village of Dallas through the criminal trespass? Okay, if, if and, and we've successfully done this a couple times in the past. Uh, property owner says there's people inside my property. Um, it, it's been up for sale. We're trying to rehab it inside. I just got here today and found some people living in there. Um, what we have attempted to do is make uh contact with the people that are in there and find out what's the reason you're in there most of the occasions is they've been they presented the police department with a absolutely bogus uh nice. lease the lease always had uh, a phone number of someone that we could never reach it was the lease was like it was a template someone downloaded and it always looked the same mm -hmm. so at that point we asked the owner what do you want to do? And it is always up to the owner what they want to do with the property. Do you want the people out? If you want them out, we can ask them to leave. If they don't leave, then you can sign a, uh, a complaint for criminal trespass to real property. And we've pursued it that way. But also what I'd like to do is ask tonight if we can get a legal opinion on the adverse possession law. 
the adverse possession law, to my understanding and to my knowledge, is the part of what we hear about squatters' rights. Now, my understanding of the adverse possession law is in order to have rights to a property that has been vacant, the person who moved in there has to have lived in there openly and notoriously for at least 20 years, had to have paid taxes on that property for seven of those years, and have made significant improvements to the property. And that's my reading of it, but I'd like to ask for a legal opinion that can be delivered to us so we have something to operate off of Correct. in the near future. I agree. Attorney Murphy? I sent the board, when I saw this on the agenda, I sent the board a memo. I don't know if everybody's had a chance to see it. If I may, Mr. Attorney, I think page one is on everybody's desk, but page two was not distributed. There's a second page to that memo. I think that to be more precise, we should almost kind of get away from the term squatter. What we're talking about is trespassers, people who are trespassing on somebody else's property. As the chief mentioned, it can be pursued as a criminal matter, whether the whether I, I don't think it's very likely that we're going to have somebody coming back from vacation to see people living in their house. We're dealing primarily with abandoned properties where you've got a mortgagee in possession or a HUD contractor management firm in possession. But in order for the police department to do anything, the owner of the property has to file a complaint. And trespass to property is a misdemeanor. Yes. Uh, and so the person gets arrested and it goes to court. Even at that, uh, sounds like the department's been pretty successful using powers of persuasion. But even then, the police department can't force somebody out of the house. They can arrest them, have, have them post bond, and then you know maybe it gets repeated again. Hopefully that doesn't happen. The other aspect is civil. It, if an owner believes that somebody's staying over wrongfully in the premises, they file what we all know is a forcible, an eviction action. The village has no part in that, and the department does not want to get involved and doesn't have the authority to get involved as what I would call the eviction police. If an owner said that that this is a tenant who's holding over, we want you to we want you to arrest them and get them out of there. The police don't do that. They don't get involved in landlord tenant disputes. What is on this particular property is puzzling to me. Well, let me back up. The chief is 100% right about this adverse possession. There are very sophisticated phonies who come to these properties. Uh, they find them. I don't know but they claim they've been there for 10 minutes and so they own it by virtue of the doctrine of adverse possession. That's complete nonsense. Uh, and in order to have adverse possession, you have to have lived on that property and have asserted control over that property for 20 years. So what's going on in Dalton now, to the extent there's a problem, it this adverse possession stuff is, is of no merit. And this is not just a Dalton problem, it's a regional problem that's a function of the, of the mortgage crisis and the crash in real estate. This property uh, on Dobson, I think, is a good example of a frustrating situation illustrating the limits of village authority. This is a HUD home that's being run by a management firm. You might think at first, well, that's good. We've got a management person we can talk to. This management firm's in Florida. You can imagine the portfolio these companies have of hundreds and thousands of homes that they don't know what's going on in them. So it, it creates frustration. Where the village does have the authority to move in and go to court for an, an enforcement to remove people from the property is if we have a health and safety issue. Uh, for example, if somebody's living in a premises, lawfully or unlawfully, and there's no water service to that property because of non-payment uh, or shutoff, that creates a health and safety problem that the village has the authority to enforce. Why? Because after that property water is cut off, you only get one flush, right? Yeah. Uh, but that's a health and safety problem that we can get the people out of. Doesn't matter if they're in lawfully, if they're the owner, or if they're a trespasser or whatever else, but it kind of illustrates the limits of village authority. We're dealing with private property rights on the one hand, and if an owner says, you know what, I, uh, 
I'm, I'm the XYZ bank and we're trying to get rid of this place. And you know what? We may prefer to have somebody in there, whether they're paying rent or not, because if somebody's living in there, the house is not going to get stripped of the of the copper and all the utilities, et cetera, et cetera. Nothing the village can do about that. It's up to the owner to say, I want those people out. But they have to enforce their rights. They cannot use the police department as the eviction police. And and they have to stand by criminal complaint, meaning what? Meaning they got to go to court to testify. So it's a it's a difficult problem. You know, the this meeting has been using the, the P word a lot. And this is not a P problem. It's a it's a regional problem that requires a lot of cooperation. Uh, but it it does this property in Dobson illustrates the challenges that we have. The water bills pay current for this property. Why? I haven't got the slightest idea. Why in the world would this HUD management firm keep the water current when nobody's in there? And I and Denise Fields sent me some uh, material from the management company that they actually had people evicted from the place. So it's a it's a dilemma for everybody. And then you've got you know the additional problems that squatter or not, the weather is the as the environmentalist said, sooner or later it's going to get winter, right? And you know how do you how do you throw people? You can't just throw people out on their ear. So it's it's a challenging problem, and it's we have to deal with it on a case by case basis. Chief, is there anything else you want to add? I don't have anything else to add unless there's a question. I have a question. This particular property in question, the Dobson property, was one of the properties I mentioned earlier, the ProChamp software that we had installed. Of the 649 properties that were registered with the village of Dalton since last May, this particular property was listed. There were complaints of drug activity and other nefarious activity uh, in this premise. And did we follow up with any complaints? You said it's a HUD managed property. Is there re any record on the side of the village where we did issue some type of fine where a inspector went in? Because I heard from one or two trustees that there was a complaint issued about boards being put on the property. Then they were taken off the property. There was some drug activity. And the next thing you know, this pops up in the, on the news, which I think was about what two, about two weeks ago. Um, what do we do in that case? Because that's the responsibility of uh, the village of Dalton to follow up when there is a complaint of drug activity or Tr or squatting. I yes, can trustee. respond to that. Thank you. Um, can I have the floor? Go ahead, okay. trustee. Um, basically, I was going to tell a whole story so from A to B so everybody kind of understand it can follow what you are saying. Um, residents, if you don't mind, just take a second. I need you to think about what I'm about to say. We had a shooting here in the village of Dalton at 144-41 Dobson. And I'm giving this information because it's already been given. It's been all over the news. Shots fired about 3 o'clock in the morning, 3.30 or so, I believe. And basically, um, it was a domestic, from my understanding. I'm just reciting what I heard. Um, the person shot, well, went to the house to pick up a cell phone. The ex-boyfriend, from my assumption, shot the girl and the boy on the porch. Therefore, everybody was called. The news came out. They was in critical condition. So let me fast forward from the situation to the border so you can understand why we're dealing with the squad situation. The house after the crime was taped off. Uh, people came out, assessed the situation. Um, board, a board of company was called out. They boarded up the property. Okay? So follow me with this. We boarded up the property. The issue was we had a squatter on the on the block. The property was supposed to be vacant, but it wasn't. The squatter took possession of the house. The squatter was therefore taking electric from the house next door with an extension cord. So I'm giving you all the facts to the story. <laughs> the house was boarded up. So that means that the person, to me, evicted themselves. So they should not be back in that property, right? Okay. Fast forward to now. Well, let, let's go two days after. I'm assuming the lady called the mayor. And she basically asked the mayor, um, Mayor, my house is boarded up. Um, well, we can back up since you laughing. I drove past that house right after the shooting. The next day, the board was off the house. The house was basically back open and the door was open, right? I called Denise. Denise sent the board up company back out. They came right away like that, which I was happy for. The house was reboarded. The person, the lady, whoever she is, I don't know her name, 
came and said to the mayor that she needed to get access back to her home. Her home was boarded up. Okay, again, it was a crime, y'all. So y'all know the house is boarded up and no one should be in the property. The mayor inserted himself by telling the police department to go and remove the board from the house. So this is where my issue come in at. My job or our job as elected official is protect the community. We should not insert ourselves in situations like that. The house should have Thank stayed boarded up and no one should have access to that property. And we should not have been calling our police department to go and take down a board when a shooting occurred. So now I put my residents back at jeopardy by doing so, if y'all following what I'm saying. So if the mayor wanted to help this young lady, all he had to do is call a homeless shelter and get help that way or call an organization to help people in that situation. The problem was fixed on the block. You guys wasn't afraid no more. You guys didn't call my phone no more until the lady arrived back in the house. The second part of this, the individual was not caught that basically did the shooting, right? So she's back in the house. So now residents are scared to the fact that the person might show back up and finish the job they started. That was the second part of it. I didn't appreciate that because again, our job is to not put you back in harm's way. The person evicted themselves basically when they committed the crime. So they should not been allowed back on the premises. If anything, we should advise the person to find shelter elsewhere. So Denise gave out um, a letter saying that they started the eviction process, meaning the KP management, which is the company that has the property. So if they started the process and the sheriff come out and evict the person, what's any difference? They still have to find somewhere to go. So it was no right of his to basically allow the lady to go back into a property that a crime just occurred and put the situation back on the block. So I just want a child to understand the story and why I'm totally against any elected official inserting themselves in a situation after we had a shooting and putting you guys back in harm's way. For the record, Mary Kay. Can I clarify a few points of that? Yeah, yeah and also, also, Chief, I want to call up DC um, Mobley. I've never talked to this lady. I don't know who the lady is. I got a call from the police department. Now you don't know her. He can straighten it out. He can straighten it out. Yeah, Mayor, the bad thing about he can, that, he can you straighten it out because like that, you put, they're not going to speak put, against you, put, you per se. You that's know? not true. Now you're going to you, you question the integrity you of these two. You appoint people. people the, you're going to question the integrity, you're gonna question the integrity of, of the I'm police chief up here and, make and, it and up, the deputy Mayor. chief. I'm not going to make it up. Well, how did the lady get back in the house? If I could make some points of clarification, please. Um, I would like to verify the mayor did not speak to that woman at all. He doesn't know her name. He never met her. He never talked to her on the phone or face to face. That is a fact. The next thing is just for the sake of the residents, that subject was caught. He has been uh, placed in jail. And he has to go to court for his crimes. The young lady who in question was not a suspect. She was not part of that crime at all. She did have an infant who also need to take care of. The next thing is the police department does not get involved in evictions, period. I don't care what situation it is, the police department does not get involved in any type of evictions. That is the sheriff's department that is outside of our jurisdiction. The particular house when we got done processing it for evidence, take the tape down and leave it, that is our involvement. That is it, we don't say who goes, who stays, we don't do that. And also the police department does not put boards up and we do not take boards down, but I'm sure the deputy chief can explain that situation. The other, the other thing I'd like to say is that they indicated, these two trustees indicated there was drug activity. I asked the deputy chief to pull the history on that house when all the police, any type of police activity that had taken place and when the police was called there. Now, trustee Henry mentioned the fact, not tonight, but she mentioned the fact earlier that for they've had problems with the house for years people made complaints and when the police people made complaints according to our housing director there's never been any complaints coming to the housing department they all went to the police department that's why i asked the deputy chief to pull the history on that house and the activity that that had occurred and why the police was there none of it was criminal activity Okay, but ahead, Mayor, you got on the Go news ahead, and lied got... and said that you didn't know nothing about that house. Them people been complaining about that house every I, I other didn't, day. I don't and get the call. The boy knew about it. The, the attorney knew about it because he got the water cut off. So why do people lie? 
They not lying that they did not complain. What, they complained what, about it, and this entire board knew about it, Mayor. What, and like how the chief just got up there and he said what he said. You know, that's the lack of who just in the basement the other day. You said you sent them out there to remove the board. That's what you said. So now I'm lying. I'm making this up up here. You know I'm not. That's what you said because you didn't want to be on the news. The, so you on, didn't, that's what on, you said because on. you didn't let the lady back in chief, the house. And I chief. said, Mayor. It's a Chief, squatter. Why would you let her back in the house where a crime just happened? Chief, this was our conversation. She did not commit the crime. Secondly, it, it don't matter. Got, Nobody should be in the house, Mayor. We're not in eviction process. But okay, business. so why did you want to go take the board off for her if it's boarded up? That means she got to find somewhere else to go, Mayor. Chief, tell me about, or tell us about the call that was generated by Detective Coleman to you and your call to me and why the boards were removed. All right. <clears throat> so, oh, so the boys was removed. Okay. So you, you, you already said that. At the he end of said, the, he just the said I, of, it wasn't. At the end of the incident, well, like Chief Collins said, once we're done, once this uh, scene has been processed, we're done with it. The, the house was boarded up. At the end of the night, the lady that was residing there, not the offender, uh, not the person, the target person, she went back to the home. It was boarded up. She reached out to Detective Coleman and was looking for some assistance. In the past, we we do house people in, in past incidents. At this point, we did not have the funding for that, the police department. I reached out to uh, Janice and I couldn't contact her. So my next step, I called the mayor. This is on a late evening. I asked the mayor, I told him what we were facing. And at that point, he advised me that we could not put her out. We have no legal ramifications to put her out. We don't know if she is there legally or illegally. Until we find that out, there's nothing that we could do. Just like Chief Collins stated, if the, if the homeowner had came to us and said, hey, this person is in my property, here's my paperwork, I'm in the process of selling it, then we can get them out of there immediately and trespass them. If they go back in, then they'll be locked up. The you mayor, also you the, also mentioned the fact there was a minor child, a three-year-old child right. with a young lady. And and what do we do? We illegally evict them mayor, and subject ourselves to liability? You have been on that block for 30 plus years. How dare you sit here and put somebody back into a house that was already boarded up? The problem was solved. It, they should have not been back in the property, period. I don't We're get how y'all don't see that like residents. If a shooting happened by your house, why would you want that individual back in the house and it's already boarded up? She was not the offender. Okay, even if she wasn't, it was already boarded up. Why would you take the boards down? That's not what we do, man. The Investigation was over. That's where it was down. We the police secured the property. The police secured the property after they could finish their investigation. And then the other incident happened with the the the, the party with the female. Uh, um, occupant and the child that's when they call me i did not we're not in the business in the, in the village attorney have told you we're not in the business of eviction i'm just going to say uh um, one other thing before i sit down two points that the chief already said the mayor had no contact with this lady he did not advise us to take put the boards up or to take them down the police department did not take them down this lady when she went back in she went in on her own free will no, she did. Well, she had no tools to get in that house. And the mayor just but, said, I'm going to let you come and speak and say why the boards was removed. So now you're saying you did. Okay. The police Chief, department did not remove the boards, okay. trustee. Okay. Chief, Chief, can you mention the fact of what the history of, you remember there were seven uh, uh, encounters that people would call the police on their residence. You, you remember them? I, I have them downstairs. Um, I know two was well-being checks. One was a noise complaint. <clears throat> Um, one was a, um, a parking complaint, but none of them out of the seven incidents that I pulled from 2015 up to current, none of them was of criminal activity and no drug activity. So thank you, Chief. Well, I think we should take it to the committee and come up with some rules. Yeah, I agree. For this village, because it seems like we don't have it. <laughs> I think the rules are the law, and the law says we can't, the village cannot evict people. 
Yeah, absent. but the rules we could also contact these people if we put something out there where residents, if they think they got a squatter, they come to the village and the village can pursue seeing who the property owner is and move forward with that owner to say, do you know they're there? If you don't, what do you want to do about it? Rather than have residents living in fear. Hmm. I, and we say that it's okay until the owner decides to put them out. I agree with that 100%, but you don't need a new set of rules. But I just think we need to do something because right now they're living there. Well, it, it, it's happening all over. I mean, none, none, of, these, right, none of these communities are immune to these squatters coming in, and they're very sophisticated. Today, can I have order, please? Today, I met with in my office, Ed Moody, the new recorder of deeds. One of the issues I brought up with him was about the squatters. And he says, Mayor, it's a, it's a big problem all over. He advised me to try to advise our residents to do, to apply for the a fraud alert through the department. <clears throat> because in some cases, these squatters come in, they file liens on the property, and they get that property in their name and and it's really difficult to get them out at that point and they're scamming seniors and um so we talked about this he agrees i mean there's a legal ramification if we don't if we do it improperly because even these squatters you say well well why are they moving in there why are they moving in there and uh you know to avoid paying but they know their rights and they have pursued municipalities and pursue mortgage companies that try to evict them illegally. One of the things that he did bring up today was the fact that, and, and I shared this with Attorney Murphy, is that some of these management companies have been paying the utilities, as in this case, they pay $759 or $749 for that water bill there at that property. And in some cases, they know that somebody's in there. And they'd rather have somebody in there, whether it's a squatter or not, to preserve the property. Because the longer that that property stays abandoned, it, it increases the appetite for the vandals to come in. And you got a $100,000 house, by the time they get through ripping it off, it's worth 15000 when they take all the infrastructure out of the house. So in some cases where these management companies cannot sell these properties, they know people are living in them, and they don't pursue it. So, as John said, to, uh, I mean, Attorney Murphy said, why would a management company pay the 700 some odd dollars when they know that someone's out to be in there? And the reason they do that is so we can't cut the water off because the bill has been paid. Well, my concern is for the residents next door exactly. that want to know if somebody's coming back to shoot somebody else. That's my concern. Right. And it, it, I mean, you're the mayor. What what do you propose we do about it, or do we just let it go? I propose that that if we identify that they're squatters, we use every ramification to try to get them out. Now we need to do the research to find out if they're squatters. Secondly, we need to put the pressure on whether it's a management company or mortgage company that should be responsible for that property. I thought when you voted in pro champs, they, they, part of the thing was identify these mortgage companies and, and lien holders that have uh, rights to these properties, not just to register them, but to force them to do something with it. If we had, and I proposed, it, a, a proposed this over four and a half years ago, that we need a full-time person, a full-time person to identify, we've identified 400 and some out abandoned properties, then we need to identify who's responsible for the upkeep, whether it's a mortgage company, whether it's a personal individual to maintain those properties. And it would even reduce our maintenance costs that we spend a lot of money on, on, on uh, cutting the grass. But that's so a part of the some, program. And some of these recognized mayor. Some, okay, you, you some, mentioned pro champs. I'm not done, trustee. Okay, thank you. Sorry, said, no. my apologies. In some of these other communities, they they don't do that in some of these other communities. They don't let those houses sit abandoned and deteriorate. They go after the, the mortgage holders and things like that. So, um, you know, that's something we need to look at. But I would not suggest us trying to 
evict those people with the police and not doing it right rightfully because we're going to set our set up somebody one of those that we forced to get out is going to set our set up ourselves up to be sued and then we put it in libel saying we have to defend it whether we win or not to cost of defending it and mayor i trustee. propose that we don't basically um put ourselves in that situation where we remove somebody from a house or wait let me back up well, we allow somebody to come in the house when we already know eviction was in process. It was pending. Oh, and we sure. still let the person go back into the property. And we knew all We never facts. knew. We you never did because I got emails from Denise right here yeah. that states that Look. it was an adverse occupant. That means the person didn't belong in the that house. That was the day then, after she had re-entered. We no, received no, that so information. This was the day of... Um, when the media was here, she okay. brought all this up here, right. and you even read it off to the media. Okay. Trustee Stubbs was there with me, so okay. I know we both can't be making that up. So that was after the is, crime, and the person was back in the in the building. Say that again. That was after the crime, when the, when the news conference was, and the person was back in the building. They went back in the building the same day. It was not. Okay, we we just recently received the second page of Attorney uh, Murphy's. every election so now because they can't beat me they got to do this smear campaign to convince public opinion that i'm bad for them so you said two elections you were first elected in 2021 no 2013 was my first election for trustee i was a trustee. Trustee. trustee i set where they are right. that's uh, why uh, i know the, the law council yes elected mayor 2021 yes term is four years yes okay uh plans are running for re-election i'm running for both my seats and yeah. i'm gonna win them so and when is the election for thornton town 2025 so those elections are the same time? They are. Bullshit. A bullshit. A bullshit. A bullshit. <laughs> okay, next. A bullshit. A bullshit. Would you like to learn a brand new and innovative way to invest your extra money that has a low barrier to entry and low competition? What if I told you that it is a guaranteed method to get up to 18 to 20% return on your investment? Tax lien and deed purchasing is the only way to get into the real estate market through the back door. No credit and no loans needed. This method isn't commonly taught and therefore the competition is very low for now. Put together a 14 hour info packed course, which will teach you everything you'll need to know to get started. Learn at your own pace, step-by-step, -step, guided video and aids to start you on the TLC deed investment process. The course offers many learning tools for new investors, helping ensure you safely invest in tax liens and deeds. Contact us today and join the buyback team.